it started uh, as, a, as a sort of request from Penguin to write a straight dictionary of the art world. And gradually it morphed into something rather different. It morphed into something incredibly self-indulgent on my part, which was part sort of memoir, part sort of, um, well, really just an investigation of the relationship between art and money, which is really such a deeply fascinating um, question. But I apologise in advance to all those people who may pick up the book and expect it to be comprehensive. It isn't. But I hope that people who read it will find it quite funny yes. and um, uh, revealing about some of that relationship between art and money. There's been a tremendous um, shift in taste in that when I first um, came into it in the 70s, all the glamour was focused on old master pictures. That's where the glamorous sales were held, that's where the world records were achieved. Gradually they were overtaken by Impressionist and modern art, and now Impressionist and modern art is being overtaken by contemporary art, so it's a process of moving forward. And of course the other thing that's changed enormously is the sheer quantity of money being invested in art now. Prices are so much higher. We are now, Sotheby's and Christie's are now major corporate businesses in a way that they certainly weren't 35 years ago. No one could have predicted quite how contemporary art has developed um, in the past 10 to 20 years. The sheer fascination of it, the sheer power of it, the market power of contemporary art, no one could have predicted. Uh, I, I, th I think the, the future is contemporary art and we live in an age unique in that contemporary art has never been as fashionable, as sought after, as totally dominant as it is in our age now. And I think that will continue. I think, um, but quite what direction it will take is one of the great unpredictables. Sometimes one even wonders whether this not, has not happened with one or two contemporary artists who are absolutely brilliant at painting the sort of pictures that um, maybe are calculated to appeal to the market that in a way they've created too. I mean, um, uh, I would, might even suggest Damon Hurst in this connection, but that would probably be very unfair. But one sees that there are artists out there now who are very clever at marketing themselves. So something that's a passion of mine I, uh, is Francis Bacon. I, I've always adored Francis Bacon, which I think I'm quite rare actually. <laughs> um, but someone like him, looking at the things you pick out, is, he almost goes against all of those, apart from the use of reds. You know, he, <laughs> he does that a lot. Well, I think he is. Uh, well, I think he is. Let's start by saying he is absolutely one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. I think he's. But he, I suppose. I do identify angst as one of those most popular themes in painting of modern times and I think he certainly conforms to that. I mean I think he, he is uh, angst ridden almost beyond anything um, but absolutely transcendent, wonderful, wonderful painter and a painter with his own myth because his private life was so fascinating and I do actually point out that artists with their own myth, who cultivate their own myth, not that he cultivated it, but it, 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 it are um, decipherable as, as being um, sort of very highly characterised, are worth that much more because it, people are fascinated by the, the artist's myth as well as of, by the paintings they produce. I was incredibly lucky very recently I was asked to value the Van Gogh Museum, the contents of the Van Gogh Museum, because the contents had to be moved because there were renovations going on and the Dutch government wanted values put on. This is the most fascinating, though totally hypothetical value. I mean, how do you value um, Van Gogh sunflowers, for instance? Um, so. Yes, in the end you have, to, you have to make up a figure, but it would obviously be more than any price ever paid to date. Hmm. And um, 
Yes, it's rather exciting. <laughs> there is definitely, um, despite all the uh, comic um, anecdotes I, I tell that might suggest the contrary, there is an underlying equation between great artistic quality and very high prices, which is consoling. 